Welcome to the True Orthodox channel. The voice of True Orthodoxy. Our channel shares information and inspiration from True Orthodoxy. Of Methodius, in the world Michael Platonovich Krasnoporov, was born on July 30, 1868 in the village of Vyatskoy, Serapolyad, Vyatka province. He studied in the Serapol Theological School and the Vyatka Theological Seminary. In 1890 he became student overseer at the Serapol Theological School, and in 1891, priest in the village of Pozdary, Serapolyad. In 1898 he was widowed. On February 11, 1900 he was tonsured into monasticism, and in the same year became assistant to the overseer of the Ufa Theological School. He was the organizer of religious moral and anti-alcoholism readings in one of the church parish schools in Ufa. One year when the crop failed he collected more than 20,000 rubles through an appeal. In 1902 he graduated from Kazan Theological Academy. In 1903 he became inspector of the Alexandrovskaya Missionary Seminary. In 1906 he became rector of the Ufa Theological Seminary with the rank of Archimandrite. In 1913 a vicariate of the Omsk Diocese was created, the Diocese of Akmerlinsk. Its first bishop was Archimandrite Methodius, who was consecrated on February 10-23, 1913 in St. Petersburg by Metropolitan Vladimir. Bogoyevlensky, Metropolitan Flavian, Gorodetsky, and others. He was distinguished for his accessibility and simplicity and was greatly loved by the clergy and people. On November 19, 1914, his see was transferred to Petropavlovsk, which was half inhabited by Kyrgyz Muslims, but Vladika Methodius had many friends and admirers among the Muslims. In 1921 Western Siberia was the arena of a peasant rebellion. The peasants were exasperated by the constant raids on the country by requisitioning bands whose aim was to take their bread, animals, etc. So a plan was hatched, and throughout Western Siberia communists were beaten mercilessly, not excluding women and children. Soon the peasants succeeded in seizing the towns of Petropavlovsk, Ishim, and Tobolsk, where the Northern Siberian government was formed. With great cruelty, with fire and sword, the Bolsheviks suppressed the peasant uprising. Whole villages were burned to the ground, and hundreds of people were shot. At Golshmanovo Station, Ishimaid, up to 500 people were shot. On taking Petropavlovsk, so as to instill fear into the inhabitants, the Reds first killed Bishop Methodius, on February 4-17, 1921. They bayoneted him, and when he was already dead, or, according to another source, when he was still alive, they thrust his priestly cross into one of his wounds. According to another source, the murder took place in March. On the square in front of the Nikolskaya, Zenkovskaya, church, where Vladika was. Serving the liturgy that day, a battle broke out between the peasants and the Bolsheviks. Blood was shed when the bishop at the end of the Maleban came out onto the square to pacify the people, the cry rang out, the popes on the pitchforks. Then he was bayoneted by the Bolsheviks. Other priests were killed at this time. Thus an unknown protopriest writes, their wrath fell first of all upon the clergy, and almost all those on the territory of the rebellion were destroyed. Near Omsk Bishop Methodius was killed. Father Basil did not enjoy his freedom and union with his family for long. The suppressors came to the village, led Father Basil out to the cemetery, and killed him. His shocked Matyushka could not stand such terrible grief and soon left for a better world. His orphaned children were taken in by the parishioners. The dean was sent to the north to procure timber. What will be with the people, will be with the priest, Isaiah 24.2. The pastors shared the lot of their flock. The participants in the rebellion or those who sympathized with them were killed on the spot by the red peacemakers, without any trial. One parishioner told me a story. They arrested his son and said. We shall send him to prison in the city, he'll sit there a couple of months and then return home. The peasant did not believe them, the cart returned too soon, while it was more than 50 versts there and back to the railroad station. 
They had probably killed him on the spot, as they had killed the others, beyond the confines, of the village. The peasant went round all the places next to the road leading to the station, but found nothing. Then he had a vision, his killed son was pasturing sheep. And the father thought, my son is letting me know about himself. He began to look near those places where sheep were pastured. A plot of land was set aside in the bushes where they brought dead animals for burial. Here, under a pile of twigs, the father found the rotting body of his son. The widow of a murdered peasant tells the story. The Bolsheviks declared a month for the voluntary surrender of the bandits, as they called the rebels. Those who voluntarily presented themselves in the course of the appointed month were promised complete forgiveness. Credulously believing the declaration, the husband of this woman appeared. He was summoned to the executive committee. An interrogation under torture was begun. The soul-rending shrieks of the tortured man could be heard coming out of the executive committee. Then they took him out as if into the city and killed him beyond the outskirts. They summoned the wife to the executive committee and mockingly said. Take away your husband and bury him. They took him to the city and he, the fool, thought about running away. He had to be shot. A group of those who voluntarily turned up were allowed home after interrogation. You've done well to turn up, they said, Soviet power is merciful, it has forgiven you everything. Three weeks passed. One night the forgiven were arrested and all shot in the cemetery. Don't miss out. Hit the subscribe button. And turn on notifications.